In this video, I'll be explaining how to get the best possible sound out of your PC whilst maintaining the best possible video quality. Most PC users opt for using a display port for video, as most higher end monitors today output refresh rates higher than expensive 4K receiver options, which is 120 Hz. For the average gamer, HDMI isn't even an option. So this leaves us with using an SPDIF connection for audio, or SPDIF. As most motherboards come with the standard optical connection, I'll be glancing over the coaxial connection, which only offers a slightly better sound than optical anyway. Now, sound is highly subjective. For some listeners, the optical cable sounds quite fine, and for others, the search for better sound often leads us to expensive sound cards with minimal and frustrating results. Most Windows 10 users find they have limited playback options using an optical cable anyway. And rightly so, it's an old technology. I'll explain this in the next section. Given I've been treated to good home theatre setups, I wanted the same from my PC. So if you want a little more from your audio, hopefully this video will assist you. Optical or Toslink cables were designed in 1983. They're a funny stopgap between analogue and digital technology. Technically, they're an analogue as they transmit pulses of light which a receiver then decodes. In a fashion, they send a zero or a one in light. But they're still analog. Natively, they transmit two-channel stereo at 16 bits uncompressed and can support sampling frequencies of 44.1 kilohertz. For reference, CDs record at 48 kilohertz. So for stereo playback, they were the bomb, in the 80s or 90s at least. When it comes to 5.1 surround setups, Optical can compress these two channels into surround, but it's limited to two channels at 24 bits. Now, without boring you with the technical details, this is the reason the sound from your rear speakers sound a little muted. It simply doesn't have the bandwidth to compete with newer sound technology. Dolby Digital and DTS developed their protocols with optical cables in mind, but the newer versions of surround don't. So when Windows 10 only allows you to choose two-channel stereo at 48 kilohertz, it's playing nice, no matter how frustrating this may seem, even if you are splashed out on quality hardware. Whereas HDMI can carry up to eight channels of uncompressed audio at 16 to 24 bits, with sample rates of between 32 and 192 kilohertz. This is true surround sound as it stands today. If you have the right receiver, you can decode Dolby Digital, DTS, Dolby True HD, and HD Master Audio, and a whole host of other codecs. The benefits of this are being able to play DVDs or Blu-ray movies with the right media player, listen to lossless quality music, and have the bandwidth to transmit full LCPM, or Linear Pulse Code Modulation. This allows a high rate of data to be passed on by the source, your PC, to the receiver, which decodes this signal. PC users will be happy to know that most game developers are now offering LCPM output with up to 192 kilohertz included in their games. It's chalk and cheese. My experience with Tom Clancy's The Division went from a dull, jittery output using an optical cable to a clear, every speaker works the same, surround output using HDMI. Let's get started. Step one. You'll need a compatible graphics card. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using a GeForce GTX 970. Most any graphics card will do that was designed in the past five or six years. More importantly, a card with at least one digital display port and one HDMI port is needed. If you haven't got a HDMI, you can also use a DVI port, as this is a digital signal as well. You'll just need to buy the appropriate DVI to HDMI cable or adapter. Step two. For this video, I'll be using a Yamaha RX V381. It's a simple entry-level 5.1 home theater receiver. I'll be pairing this with a JBL SC500 5.1 channel speaker system with active subwoofer. Going this route will set you back around $410 for the receiver and $350 for the speakers. The benefits of using a receiver mean you can connect a second monitor to your system connect other audio devices, and play a variety of DVD and Blu-ray quality surround sound codecs for playback using the appropriate media player, such as Cyberlink Power DVD. Step 3. 
gain access to the rear of your PC and find the graphics card slot. You're interested in the digital optical port as well as a HDMI port. Plug the cables in and access the rear of your receiver. Again, we're interested in the HDMI in port. Remember, as the PC recognizes this as a dual monitor setup, you can always opt for using the HDMI out into a second monitor. But for this video, we'll only be using the HDMI to carry audio. Given there isn't a second monitor to connect to, your video card won't receive what's called a handshake, so your card's performance won't be affected in any way. I'll leave it up to you guys to connect the speakers and set up the receiver as per the manual. The final step in this video is making a few changes to the Windows settings. So step one, we'll jump into settings and type in sound. What we're looking for is manage audio devices. Generally under the playback section, you'll have a digital optical out set as default. What I've done is disabled this. We move up and you should be able to find the NVIDIA high definition audio device. In this case, it's set to the receiver's name, so it's quite easy. I click on that and I set that as default. I then move across to properties. What I'm interested in is having a look at the supported formats. These formats should reflect what your receiver is capable of outputting. We move over to advanced and we ensure we select the default format at the highest possible setting. That's generally what your receiver can output. Okay. I disable all enhancements because I'd like the receiver to do all the work. Okay. Then we can configure this to the appropriate speaker setting you have. So I have a 5.1 surround, I click on that. Next, all these should be set, next, next, and it's finished. So that's the audio setup. Next, I right click the desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel. And what I'm looking for is set up multiple displays. Now under this section, you'll look at the displays you have connected, one and two. Now one should be set to your primary display, which is the one you're using, because you're not using the second one as a display. But nevertheless, click both of them. More importantly, we're interested in surround spanning options. What this does is this ensures that your mouse doesn't go off screen. Now generally for dual monitor setup, the mouse can span across both monitors. Since we don't have the second monitor connected, we want to disable this, so make sure that's not clicked. Again, here's the primary display, and the secondary display shows up here as well. I go down, and I apply, usually there's an apply button here, and it'll save its settings. Close that, and that should be everything finished up. I hope you enjoy. And don't forget to restart your PC. There was only one road back to LA. US Interstate 15. Just a flat out high speed burn through Baker and Barstow and Purdue. Then onto the Hollywood freeway straight into frantic oblivion. Safety. Obscurity. Just another freak. In the freak kingdom. <laughs>